Winton, a peaceful little hamlet in the southern region of New Zealand, smartly known as Southland. Winton is roughly 30 kilometers away from Invercargill, and for most of its history, Winton has been a sleepy and peaceful hamlet. However, Winton has a dark past, a story that is told to children to keep them in check and scares even the toughest of Kiwis, and her name is Minnie Dean. G'day, my name is Jan, and today I'll be talking about Minnie Dean, or more commonly known in New Zealand as the Baby Farmer. She was one of the most disturbing murderers in New Zealand's colonial history, her past is shrouded in mystery, and her acts would create new laws on childcare and make her become a folklore monster. But before we get into the murder and horror, the subscribe button just said your mum's a cow. So stab the subscribe button and kick that bell in the gonads just for being there. So shall we see how it began? Wilhelmina John McCulloch, born 2nd of September 1844. Minnie was not born in New Zealand, but in Scotland. Greenock, to be exact, it's unknown how Minnie got her nickname, but I'm guessing she looked quite a bit like Minnie Mouse in her youth. Other than that, most of Minnie's life is not recorded, but before she arrived in New Zealand, her mother, Elizabeth Swan, died due to cancer in 1857. In the early 1860s, Minnie arrived in New Zealand with two daughters, and made her way down to Invercargill. When asked if she had a husband, she claimed that she was the widow of a Tasmanian doctor, but there is no evidence to back up that claim, as she kept her last name. It's also unknown who the main father of Minnie's two daughters are, as there's never been any record of him ever been seen. In 1872, Minnie married a innkeeper named Charles Dean, who was from Tasmania. She would take on his last name and making her the infamous Minnie Dean. The two lived near the hard to find Eatle Creek. At the time, Southland was having a god rush and Charles and Minnie were lucky as Eatle Creek was a booming area between the gold towns of Riverton and Queenstown. Sadly, in the same year, the Otago Southland God Rush was practically over, and quickly Eatle Creek became a backwater area and less and less people came to visit the Dean's family inn. They managed to survive another six years before Charles decided to go into farming. As Charles was starting up his farming life, Minnie decided to adopt a five-year-old orphan named Margaret Thatcher Cameron in 1880. In 1882, Charles had 300 acres of land full of rabbits, alongside 150 sheep, which all summed up to 1,200 pounds, or in modern times, 160,000 444 pounds. That's a huge bitch! However, misfortune would strike the Deans again in 1884, when the New Zealand land boom collapsed. In 1887, Charles was forced to go bankrupt, selling the inn, all of his farmland, and all the animals on it. The Deans would make the drastic decision to make the trip to Winton to start a new peaceful life. The Deans would take hold of a prestigious house named The Larches. It had two stories, eight rooms, and wait, it gets more important. But before the Deans could get fully settled in, the estate went up in blazes. It's unknown what started the fire, but my biggest guess is someone left the stove on. Charles being the builder he was, he built a two-roomed cottage on the property, and after that, he decided to go into farming again. He would take care of sows and boars, or in other words, domestic pigs. Many, on the other hand, decided to become a nanny. Instead of the modern nanny taking care of their grandchildren or spoiled rich brats, nannies of the time would take care of children that were undesirable. Just like you, little Timmy. These children were either born out of wedlock or who were sick. And since it was the 1880s and contraception basically didn't exist, many was never short on parents who could not afford or could not care for a child. Many would ask for a small fee a week or a lump sum of cash by the parent of the unwanted child. Most of the children under Minnie's care were severely ill, as in the 1800s, New Zealand's infant morality rate was a worrying problem. Roughly 20 out of 100 infants would die of disease and other illnesses. As to be expected, some of the children under Minnie's care would die. Before the 1890s, local authorities started to have a strange feeling about Minnie Dean. 
His suspicions became more concerning when a six-week-old baby died due to convulsions, and later a six-week-old baby would die due to lung failure. In August of 1893, an owner of a boarding school in Christchurch would report a woman to local police claiming that this woman had picked up a three-week-old baby while she stayed in Christchurch. This lady was none other than Minnie Dean, looking for more children to sacrifice, I mean, take care of. The police would send a detective to ask Minnie Dean about the baby, and if she had anything to prove that the baby was under her lawful care. Minnie had no proof that she had legal right over the baby. And so, with no hesitation and following laws I can't find, the detective decided to confiscate the three-week-old baby. The owner would later say in a statement, I believe this woman would have either killed or abandoned this child before she got to Dunedin, if, she had not been, if it had not been taken away from her. Locals would state when going near the Dean's property, they could see newly made mounds around the back and the side of the house. It quickly became a local rumour that Minnie had killed and buried children under her care and supervision. The Winton authorities started to become extremely suspicious about Minnie Dean in 1894. They hired a coroner, or in other words, a death inspector. And for a while, the coroner looked into Minnie Dean's nanny program and justified that Many actually never killed any of the children, and in fact, the children died due to natural causes, stating with such poor hygiene standards of the time, the children would have still died of the same illnesses at birth. Not many people believed the coroner, and the Winton community began to heavily distrust the Dean family. If you're wondering what happened to Charles, well, I'm actually not too sure at this time, as I could not find what he was doing around the time, so I either believe he was either not around, or he was just too busy with his pig farm, picking up all that big doo-doo. As for Minnie's two daughters, they both left home and got married in the early 1880s. As for Margaret, well, they'll be told soon. As Minnie Dean became more and more distrusted by the community, where it had gotten out that Minnie had attempted to hide herself from the public, and when she had a new parent going to leave their child in Minnie's care, she would not use her real name, and in fact, she would use a fake name in order to hide from her reputation. For a while, everything seemed to actually be dying down. They would be all forsaken when a boy under Minnie Dean's care would die. Minnie claimed that the boy had died of drowning, and she did everything in her power to save him. Many people did not believe Minnie's claim, as she had buried the boy's body on the estate instead of properly going through the right procedures. The police would try to look into it, but under New Zealand's child laws of the time, police could not enter the Dean's property, nor could ask for a talk with the Deans. On the 2nd of May, 1895, Minnie Dean was seen hopping aboard a train. She would also be seen with a baby and a hat box. As a train came to a stop at the next station, Minnie got off. She left with a hat box and no baby. When the railway porter, a person who helps passengers off trains with their luggage, handed Minnie Dean her hat box, they later said it was disturbingly heavy. The railway porter instantly reported to his supervisors that Minnie was missing a baby. The police were immediately called to help find the baby, but there would be no success. With all eyes on Minnie, the police arrested her and took her all the way to Winton and began to search her estate. After a while, the police decided to dig up the back and discovered a most horrifying and disgusting scene. They would find the corpses of the two babies who had died from illness and the drowned boy. The children who had died were rightfully diagnosed as murdered. One of the babies, named Dorothy Carter, was diagnosed to be killed by suffocation. The other baby, whose name is unknown, was killed by an overdose of ludinum, which was a sedative used back in the day to put people to sleep. As for the boy, the police could not find the reason of death, but it's much presumed that Minnie had purposely killed the boy. With the police questioning Minnie Dane, they had a look inside the hat box and found the baby that Minnie had on the train. They turned the baby around and found a puncture wound on the top of the baby's head. With this horrible search, the police rightfully charged Minnie Dane 
with murder and infanticide. Many was held in Invercargill prison and on the 18th of June 1895 the trial of Minnie Dane would begin. Witness accounts stated that Minnie had picked up Dorothy on the 13th of April in Bluff. Minnie would return to Winton to rest and take care of the children at her estate for two days. Afterwards, Minnie left the estate with only a hat box. She travelled to Clarendon where Minnie picked up Eva Hornsby, and by this time, Minnie's hat box was oddly heavy. While in jail, Minnie Dean read a 49 page long book about what she had done. While researching about Minnie, I found a most horrible discovery. Minnie had over 26 children die under her care. Most of the children were killed by Minnie herself. When Minnie was on trains, she would put the child inside of her hat box, and silently she would put a pin right through the box and straight into the child's still developing skull, killing them instantly. More disturbingly, Minnie with no remorse would chuck the baby into any body of water the train came across. If she was not on a train and instead on her family estate, many, many would do a more gruesome and horrifying way to get rid of the body. She would go outside, go to the pig farm, and toss the dead bodies into Charles Pig's farm, leaving no trace that many had ever killed the child. For many Dean's lawyer, she got defense counselor Alfred Hanlon. He argued that the death of the children was an accident. He argued the same thing for three days, but the judge would see right through him and would later state, it seems to me the real honest issue is whether the accused is guilty of intentionally killing the children or is innocent altogether. A verdict of manslaughter, he said, would be a weak need compromise. The judge would sentence many to be publicly executed. Her death would be hung by the gallows. Three months later, on the 12th of August, Minnie would walk up to the gallows. The sheriff of Invercargill would ask if Minnie had any last words. She did not. As the executioner pulled the lever, the sheriff heard Minnie Dean say, God, let me not suffer. Shortly after, Minnie would drop. She would die minutes later. Minnie John Dean was dead. She was the only woman in New Zealand's history to be executed. Many would be buried in Winton, and it is said that her grave is cursed. People have claimed that nothing would grow in or around her grave. In 2009, a headstone was given to Minnie Dean's grave. The grave reads, Minnie Dean is a part of Winton's history. Where she now lies is no mystery. But there is something most people don't actually know about the grave in Winton. It is not actually Minnie Dean's grave, but in fact, a copy. Minnie Dean's grave is actually behind the graveyard. I could not find the main reason why, but it must have been assigned by the community in order to disrespect Minnie Dean for her wrongdoings. As for Charles, well, Charles would continue his pig farming, and in 1908, Charles would die in the house he built. The estate was set ablaze, again. It's unknown what started it, but it is assumed that it may have been self-intended or an accident. Either way, Charles Dean would die at the age of 78. As for the girl many had adopted, Margaret, well, she would die too. It's unknown how she was killed, but all fingers lead to Minnie Dean. Throughout the entire British Empire, Baby farming was actually pretty common in the late 1800s and early 1900s when vaccines basically didn't exist. Children had a higher chance of dying from illness and also home births were more common than modern day home hospital births. Single mothers had an extremely hard time taking care of their children and if the child wasn't in the care of their mother instead in the care of a nanny or owner of a boarding home, this caregiver would sometimes stop caring for a certain child and leave them to die. After the child had died, instead of taking full responsibility for the child's death, they would bury the child in the back of their property. An example of baby farming was Daniel and Martha Cooper. They both arrived in Wellington, New Zealand in 1919. They owned a boarding home for single mothers and their children. They were both convicted of kidnapping children and doing illegal abortions on mothers. 
They would also be convicted of murder and infanticide, as police had also digged up dead bodies in the back of their property. In 1923, Daniel was found guilty, and he was hung in Terence Jail, Wellington. Martha, however, was instead cleared of any crimes, and she lived until 1975, living a full life in a backyard full of dead children. Now that I've covered the witch known as Minnie Dean, and a quick run up on other baby farmers, it's now time to talk about how Minnie Dean became a folklore monster and how she scares children from the dead. In New Zealand, there have been many infamous murderers. No other murderer has been more infamous than Minnie Dean. Though Minnie Dean has been dead for over 126 years, she's told to children who misbehave and who are naughty. Mothers and fathers who know about Minnie Dean will say, you better watch out or I'll send you off to Minnie Dean's farm and you'll never be seen again. Minnie has become a part of New Zealand's Southland folklore. People would create songs about Minnie Dean, including the song Ballet of Minnie Dean. In 1985, Minnie Dean's trial was told on New Zealand television. It was based on Minnie's lawyer, Alfred Hanlon, and how he basically failed to get Minnie Dean off of any charges of murder. In 2006, Dudley Benson made the song It's Akarua's Fault. Minnie would also get her own flower named after her, but there's a catch to it. It was cursed. If the flower touched any type of garden or plant, the flower and the item it touched would rot. I could not find where this plant grows, but Dean's Road gives me a bit of a clue. Minnie Dean will forever live in the minds of New Zealanders, and for her actions, the Child Law of 1893 and 1896 would be enacted. Paid childcare would be taken under heavy scrutiny. So if you ever wonder why going down the caretaking career pays so little, you can thank Minnie Dean for that. And that pretty much wraps up all. I'd like to thank you for watching, and if you'd like me to cover any certain murder, comment down below and I'll do my best to cover it. I thank you and good night.